So first off, congratulations on this re-release. I, I must be a little bit of an interesting experience for you to, to, to see the movie again. Talk a little bit about your character and, and what this movie has meant to you. First of all, I want to say, it, I thank God too, that the, the edit that he did is great. And I love it. And adding the chapter titles are great because I thought, oh no, what if this is terrible? And I've already agreed I'm going to do press about it. So thank God it's great. Um, and I got cut out a lot. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I have no problem with it because watching the movie, first of all, I forgot how beautiful it was. I forgot how, how many incredible people were in the cast. So it was like seeing the movie for the first time because I, I saw it so long ago and we shot it so long ago. Um, but about a third of the way in, I was like, wait a minute, I don't understand what Olivia Thirlby and I are doing in the desert later on. Why, why were we dressed like that? And what were we doing? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to make sense. And it was gone. And I, I, it made me feel like, oh, I am, a, I am a healthy actress. I'm okay with the fact that I got cut out because it, <laughs> it, I mean, I'm still in the movie. I play Woody, the, it's, it starts with Kyle Gallner playing a young man who lives in an apartment with a magic door and a weird uh, fax printer. Um, and he's the gatekeeper to a place where people can go back in time and possibly change a decision or a moment in their lives. And, and sort of the overarching question is, is that the right thing to do? Or is, is, did the past happen for the reason that the past happened? He's also a children's book author and I play his, uh, his editor or book agent. I guess I'm his editor. Am I his editor? Have you seen it? Yeah, I think you're his book editor. Okay, I think I'm his editor, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, um, but there are a lot of other stories going on. There are, 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 are stories with uh, uh, a prophet and Mo or Moses and uh, Nick Offerman and, and um, then Josh Brenner is this, I don't want to give anything away. He's a young man, who, something terrible. There's a bunch of people who bad things have happened to them. Francis Conroy plays one of the people in this space, this, this, <laughs> fantastical space where you go and you have the opportunity to change the past. Um, and uh, I am, I'm just rambling. What was, what was the question? What did I think about? I, I, I don't know how to explain it because it's fantastical, but yeah. it's also um, really uh, a really interesting personal question mm -hmm. uh, about if you could change something from the past, is it the right thing to do and would you do it yeah and what information do you need to know if changing it is the right thing or is it a very personal selfish thing because what's that thing the butterfly effect or the butterfly yeah the butter butterfly effect yeah right where and is it see i don't even know what i'm talking about i failed out of art school so i'm not going to do very well with the <laughs> theorem um the butterfly if it, if it goes to the left a little bit it can change the arc of history, yeah. Okay, great. That's the question to the movie. Yeah. Um, where Where do you think the movie comes down on, on that whole question? And where Where, where it, it seems to be a very deep movie. What What do you What do you Where do you think it sort of lands on that issue? I, I think where it lands in the movie is it's a case by case basis because we don't the audience does not end up necessarily finding out who made the decision to change something in the past. And I just pointed out to Oliver, the director, I said, you realize the irony of you making a movie about going back and changing the past and you've now recut this movie and you're releasing it. And he was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Which is hilarious to me, but I, I think he did make the right choice and he, the movie he did in the beginning, it wasn't a bad movie. I think if you look at any work, like have you written something or interviewed someone and afterwards, even for days afterwards, you lay there going, oh, I should have said this. I should have asked this. I could have changed yeah. this. And he's had the opportunity to do that with a movie and release it in a time when people, I know speaking for myself, are desperate for content because I've already seen Top Chef, the entire series 
18 years all the way through six times. <laughs> I've watched Raiders of the Lost Ark and Jaws 10 times. Like this, it, I'm excited for all of us that this movie gets to go back out there in the world and that he was able to make a, a good change to it. Yeah. So what, what do you make of this whole idea of the director's cut and going back into something? I mean, do you think it actually... Is it, is it a different movie when he when he does this or is it a better movie? like is it qualitatively better how do you come down on these issues I do I think it I think it is better and it's more cohesive it's easier to follow there were, there are a lot of ideas yeah and a lot of characters and a lot of questions as you go on this journey and and Oliver's idea was this movie is sort of more like a book or a TV show than a movie because it's not just one narrative. You're 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 snicking all over the place, and he wanted to put in uh, title chapters. And I didn't realize that 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 this re-release, I guess the f- the first page that comes up is all of the title chapters. Yeah. And he, he was saying, and this I find interesting about him as a person. Clearly, there's some control issue. He was saying, I want to know what I'm getting into. If I, if I start watching a show, I want to know how many episodes. So I thought, oh, well, in watching this movie, it might, it might help people to know these are the chapters and see some names and ideas of where the film might be going, because you do have to, you have to follow it. You, 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 it doesn't hold your hand all the way through. You re- I got a wrinkle <laughs> watching this movie like wow wha- whoa and I w- was there I was in it and I still was <laughs> like surprised by everything that happened in it yeah 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 so I mean I think originally when it was released it got it got uh some feedback that it was so overly eccentric do you what would do you think that the the director's cut sort of addresses some of that or make it, or, or do you think that, that it, it's meant to be in that sort of film? No, I think it was meant to be what it is now. Yeah. And I think that it did take maybe, a, maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't want to. More I don't time wanna... to mull over the ideas. Well, it just had a clearer, there's a clearer path. Yeah. That, that, that the movie follows and, um, some crazy stuff happened. I don't remember. I do remember not knowing why, what I, what we were supposed to be doing, shooting that one scene in the desert later, Olivia Thurlby and I did. And then watching the movie, it wasn't there. I was like, oh, thank God. Cause I never, I didn't even understand at the time, I think what we were doing. So I just knew that I loved, the, I loved the ideas and, and I, I love the questions that yeah. it, raises and so that to me was more important than you know and it was look there was no budget all of those locations that woody's apartment was oliver's apartment he spent three months painting that mural in his apartment wow i think i think we shot at molly quinn's house um like it was no everyone had those are our clothes everyone wore their own clothes no like it was low budget and when you get that, when you get that script, you're because I knew I knew Molly Quinn. She's also one of the producers, and she said, "Hey, will you read this script? I think you'd be great in this part." And I was like, "Oh, no budget, indie. Oh, I hope this sucks." And then it was great, and I was like, "All right." I'll... But it was it was worth doing. It was just yeah. meeting Oliver. He was so excited, and he was very clear about what he wanted. And I and I do think it's fascinating, especially with this movie that you know, six years later, he's able to, to, you know, push the button and change, change something about what he did. That's interesting and fascinating. It also seemed like it's such an incredible, looking back at it, such an incredible cast. And you didn't, necessarily, awesome, right? you didn't necessarily know where all these people were going to go with their careers. And um, so was it, did you feel any of that sort of lightning in a bottle when you were were there in that set? Do you, do you have any specific memories of it? I, I do. I'm, I, obviously, I only worked with Kyle and then did some stuff in the desert later. Um, and Kyle Gallner was great. I knew he was great. I did when Molly gave me the script, 
then she, I, I can't remember, I somehow emailed Keegan-Michael Key and sent him the script and said, hey, I'm doing this indie. I know it's no money, but read it. I think you'd like this part. And then he came on board. But Nick Offerman, Francis Conroy, Olivia Thurlby, Molly, uh, I mean, uh, Josh Brenner, that guy's amazing. And um, oh, the young lady who starts the whole movie out going into the little room and I don't know her name. Oh, shoot. I looked her up. She's so good. Um, it, 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 the, that cast is amazing. Mm -hmm.